Welcome back. In the previous video, we have introduced the discovery of electrical charge and electricity. Now, we are going to introduce the discovery of magnetic field and the magnet. About 2,500 years ago, in a mountain, a shepherd boy found that his iron tip the stick got lightly attracted to some stone on the ground. This was actually in some area was called Magnesia in Greece. Uh, he actually tried to touch this stone by his hand or by other materials, but this stone was only attracting iron. So when he tried to touch the stone with his finger, nothing happened. It only acted on the iron tip of his stick. So we have some magic with this type of stone which attract irons only. Uh, according to this finding, they called uh, this type of material or this type of stones magnetic stones. And in China, they used to have something like this to read the fortune. And by letting this spoon to move around like a roulette, for example, and according where it will stop, it will decide your fortune. And they noted that if they are using magnet stone in this type of uh, fortune reading in instruments, uh, the spoon is always indicating one direction, and this one direction is towards the north, for example, while the remaining part of the stone is going toward the south. According to this finding, the Chinese invented the first compass in the world. And effectively, the invitation of the compass was one of the, Greece, one of the greatest invitations in all of the world. Because effectively, the compass enabled navigation without the need to look for the sun and the stars. Because by using the compass, it is always indicating the north and the south. And it has been noted that such magnet stone always is direct to north and another direction is to the south. So the direct is, is a magnet stone can be classified into north and south and according to the north and south pools of the magnet uh, the scientists at studied the attraction and repulsion between magnets. In this case, uh, when we have two similar boards, like boards rebels to each other. For example, the north rebels to the north, and the south rebels to the south. So if we have a north and north, and we try to put them together, they rebuild each other. On the other hand, if we have cells and cells, they also rebuild each other. Now, unlike bulls attract each other. So, if we have north and we nearby south bulls, we will find that the north is attracting the south. So we have north and south poles, and we nearby them, we will find them, they attract each other. South and north attract each other. On the other hand, repulsion is sure test for magnetism means that if we have a piece of metal, 
uh, if I have two pieces of metal and they are attracting each other, one of them it could be a magnet and the other it can be simple iron. So if I have south north or north south and an iron piece, both of them will be attracting the iron. But if I'm having north and north, they will be repelling each other. So repulsion can only be observed between two magnets. That's why repulsion, repelling is a test of the magnetism. Actually, uh, why the compass is always indicating one direction to the north, for example. This can be explained due to the Earth itself has an equivalent great magnet inside it, and this great magnet has its north to the south direction and the south is to the north direction. So the north of the campus, uh, it prefer to going to the south pole, and the south of the campus would prefer to going to the north pole. So effectively, the Earth itself it has its own magnetic field, such that the north of the magnetic field is going from the south pole, and the south of the magnetic field of the Earth is going from the north pole. Generally speaking. Uh, the magnet itself, it cannot be affected without another magnetic field. So, if we have a compass, for example, or if I have a magnet, and this magnet is moving uh, in some place, this means that there, there is some magnetic field around us. Uh, effectively, this was an introduction between the electricity and the magnetism by using a rested experiment. A rested experiment, it was simply, uh, rested was uh, studying the electric current and nearby there was uh, a compass. So he noted that when the electric current passed Austin's rested experiment. experiment. In, In 1820, 1820, Hans Christian, Christian Austin performed, performed a simple, simple experiment, experiment and discovered the magnetic effect, effect of electric current. current. The experimental setup, similar to the Austin's experiment, which led to the discovery of magnetic effect of electric current, is shown in the animation. A conductor or conducting wire AB lying in north-south direction is connected to a battery V through a commutator or tapping key K and rheostat RH. A magnetic compass needle. NS is placed just below the conductor AB. Initially, when no current passes through the wire AB, the magnetic compass needle shows no deflection. When an electric current passes through the wire placed above the compass needle, the magnetic compass needle got deflected from its normal position, which is along north-south direction. On reversing the direction of electric current through the wire, he observed that the magnetic compass needle got deflected in the opposite direction. Also, the deflection of the compass needle increased when the magnitude of electric current through the wire was increased or when the compass needle was brought closer to the wire. Actually, uh, this experiment of Oristed has linked the electric current to the magnetic field because uh, the magnetic compass itself it cannot be deflected without introducing a magnetic field. So, if the deflection occurs due to the electric current in the wire, this means that the, this electric current will introduce a magnetic field, and this magnetic field will introduce a force on uh, the compass. This force will introduce this deflection in the compass. Actually, this very simple experiment introduce the link between the electrical current and the magnetic field. And based on this simple uh, experiment, uh, Ampere in uh, France introduced what is called Ampere's law to introduce the relation between the induced magnetic field due to the electric current. And according to Ampere's law, uh, scientists uh, was, were able to invent 
uh, electrical motor. Effectively, the basic idea of the electric motor is that we have electric current passing in the coil, and this current passing in the coil will introduce magnetic field. This magnetic field interacts with a stationary magnetic field at the stator of the motor, such that it will move or rotate this, uh, the rotator part of the motor. This is the basic idea of electrical motor. So, according to the link between electricity and magnetism introduced by rested experiment, all the motors in this world uh, are available nowadays. On the other hand, there is another link between electricity and magnetism introduced by Faraday that if I have a time varying magnetic field, this time varying magnetic field will introduce electric current. Let us see. Electromagnetic induction. Prepare a circular coil out of copper wire. Connect the two ends of this coil to the two terminals of a sensitive galvanometer with the scale having zero at the center. This closed circuit is shown in the diagram. Note that this circuit contains no source of electricity and the galvanometer shows zero reading initially. Take a bar magnet NS and move it swiftly towards the coil with its north pole facing the coil. You will observe a deflection in the galvanometer when the magnet is moving. The deflection indicates that the current is set up in the coil. Now, move the magnet away from the coil. The galvanometer shows again a deflection but in the opposite direction. This means current is set up in the opposite direction. If you hold the magnet with its south pole facing the coil and repeat the above steps, the deflections are again observed, but are reversed. Similarly, motion of the coil itself also produces deflections in the galvanometer when the magnet is kept stationary. Do you observe any deflection when you just hold the magnet stationary near the coil at rest? No. A relative motion of a magnet and a coil induces the current in the coil. The current produced by a relative motion of the coil or the magnet is called an induced current and is said to be set up by an induced electromotive force, EMF. The production of an induced EMF in a coil in a closed circuit by a relative motion of a magnet and its coil is called the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction. This was the invitation of Faraday. Faraday said that if I have time varying magnetic field inside a closed loop or a closed circuit, this closed circuit will introduce electromagnetic force or electric current inside the circuit due to the variation of the magnetic field. Effectively, this was the basic idea of electrical generator. So, from Ampere's law and the experiment of Oristic, we introduce the electric motor, and from the experiment of Faraday, we introduce the electric generator. Now, by using the electrical generator, we can convert mechanical energy into electrical energy, and from the experiment of Rested and Ampere's law, we can convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. In this way, we can generate electricity at generators, for example, and transmit this energy through the transmission line to the factory or any place to consume this energy and then convert it back to mechanical energy. This was the basic idea of the Industrial Revolution in uh, 1990s. And effectively, also based on the Faraday's experiment and Oris' experiment, we can introduce what is called electrical transformer. In electrical transformer, we can increase the voltage or decrease the voltage of the alternating current. In this way, we can, for for example, for distributing electricity, it is preferred to distribute electricity at high voltage and then return back at the customer to make it low voltage. This can be introduced by uh, electrical transformer. So, according to the link between electricity and magnetism introduced by Aristotle and Faraday, Aristotle says that 
electrical current will introduce magnetic field. And Faraday said that time varying magnetic field will introduce electric current. So there is a relation between electric current and magnetic field. Or in other words, electricity and magnetism are related to each other. That's why when we study electricity, we must study magnetism. And when we study magnetism, we must study electricity. Okay? Now you can understand why you are going to study electricity and magnetism. Okay? According to what Ambers, Oristed, and Faraday has introduced, all the machineries and all electrical transportation systems you see based on the series of Faraday's and Ambers. Uh, on the other hand, Maxwell, James Clark Maxwell, has combined all the laws of electrical and magnetic fields in a famous four equations called Maxwell's equations. So these four equations are based on the work of Faraday, the work of Ampere, and the work of Gauss. And according to these four equations, Maxwell have shown that the relation between electric field and the magnetic field it can introduce what is called electromagnetic waves. And from the basic concept of electromagnetic waves, Hertz and Marconi introduced the first wireless system. So, according to what we are calling electric field and what we are calling magnetic field and the combination or the interaction between electric and magnetic field, we introduced Every wireless system, every wireless system, including radio, television, uh, satellite communication, uh, mobile, Wi-Fi, so on, so on, so on. Every wireless system around us is based on the combination between electric and magnetic field. To understand how these objects are working is required to study electricity and magnetism. On the other hand, with the uh, improvement in quantum physics and semiconductor, uh, it was possible to invent uh, different electronic components starting from simple dial to transistor to the microprocessor. Now, everything around us, like the computer, like the mobile phone, like the transceiver, everything around us, including such semiconductor devices, and all of them are based on uh, the electrical signal inside uh, such uh, semiconductor devices. So imagine now, this is the history of the electricity and magnetism, starting from uh, the amber stone and the magnet stone, and nowadays this amber stone and magnet stone has created for us uh, everything around us. Uh, working with electrical in electrical energy and electromagnetic waves, so everything around us, starting from such simple uh, series, based on electricity and magnetism. That's why we are studying electricity and magnetism.